Most people, David Helbig is uh, known for his quite hilarious blog, Belgian Solutions. I think you might know that. Also, two books already. Two books. And um, my favorite on Instagram, where da da David is trying to look like buildings. Check it out, it's really funny. Um, but also, David also makes performances, uh, museums, public spaces. <coughs> but originally, David is a composer. And I think you will notice that he never really stopped writing scores. Um, scores to discover <laughs> the sound of things, scores to see the landscape in new ways, to engage differently with others, to feel things in your own body. Um, for David, walking is roaming. He goes where his feet bring him. Um, there is no really a fixed destination. If you disagree, David, please shout something. Uh, but the, it's about a major awareness about the surrounding world. He thinks, feels and makes his way through a world in formation. I think it's also what you see in Belgian solutions. Um, and his movements are resonant with the movements of others around us. And walking, I guess, is very present in his work, both as a methodology and, methodology and as an artistic project in itself. At this very moment, David is working on an uh, audio guide, uh, a new sound walk for Hasselt. And I think you will talk a little bit about maybe ideas, but also techniques that you use. David, the stage is yours. Um, a brand new experiment. Do you realize how much bigger your sense of space is inside your mouth than outside in this room? Give it a little thought, try to compare your mouth feeling with the space feeling. I will leave this microphone for a moment because I will now conduct your tongue. <coughs> First time ever done here, now. So just follow my movement with your tongue inside your mouth. The nice thing is that I almost have no idea what you did. If you did anything or nothing at all. For me, this is a moment of self-performance, self-performativity, where I can, as an artist, guide you into an experience, but all the responsibility for the experience lies with you. Um, I will talk you through my audio guide that I'm making for Z33, for Hasselt, in the commission from that 33. But of course, this audio guide is not yet made, so I have to improvise it, and I will kind of like spice it up with examples of works that have maybe done similar, similar things. Um, the audio guide maybe has the title Hit and Run, or maybe Baby Hit Me One More Time. Of course, it's like so evident, isn't it? And um, it star I mean, what you get is like a set of open headphones Open headphones are headphones where you still hear the environment as much as you can hear what's inside, depending on the volume of the tracks, of course. But uh, headphones are, uh, open headphones are merely used in studio work, but also for people who sit like for hours in front of the television, uh, and uh, they still have to hear when the dinner is ready. That's why they have also always these very, very long cables um, from the television to the sofa. Uh, I use these headphones because I think it's beautiful to uh, not lock yourself up from the city, but still uh, because my audio guides try to give you uh, a sense of relationship to the city, but a sense that is very twisted. Uh, you will put these headphones on 
in, uh, in Z33, and there comes an introduction. The introduction is literally an introduction, because uh, I try to find a moment of uh, introactivity instead of interactivity. What we just did was maybe a moment of introactivity. You did something for yourself in the inside instead of just sharing it with me. So I didn't make you perform for me. Still, you performed. But you performed for yourself. You performed an inner state, an act. Um, I want to give you an example. Um, listen to the left. Listen to the right. Listen to the space behind you. Listen to the space above your head. Listen to the front. So back to me. Thanks, there you are again. One step further. Listen to the left again. Very slowly, turn your head all the way to the right while you listen to the left. Keep listening through your left. Slowly, turn your head all the way to the right. Stay there. You are now listening to the front, to me, more or less. Keep listening to the front, but turn your head all the way back to the other side. Very slowly. Keep listening to the front. <coughs> All the way to the right. No, to the right. Yeah, to the right. Go back. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> they twisted directions. Oh, did I twist directions? Okay, then I'm very sorry. So you're all the way at the other side. Let's go back. You're listening to the front, the listening direction state, and you're looking to the left. Or where are you looking at now? Did I twist it up? Did I change left and right? Okay, let's start. I go a bit quicker. Listen to the left, turn your head all the way to the right. We do this, we take the listening direction with us. The listening direction stays to the front and we turn the head slowly all the way back to the left indeed. You're now listening through your right to the front. Keep listening through your right, take the listening direction with you and turn your head all the way back to the other side. You are now listening to the back of you, if everything worked out well. Keep listening to the back and turn your head back to me. So somehow I lost you now. You're still listening to the back. You can't hear me at all. <laughs> to correct this situation, the most challenging moment, to take the listening direction over your head back to the front. I give you 10 seconds for this. I count silently. One. Voila. Here you are. A moment of interactivity. What exactly happened is hard to say. Maybe a musical experience without any music being played back. Um, still, it is you who is the player, the performer, and the listener at the same time. Um, let me do one more, because I like that so much. <laughs> Some of the people here have done it already this afternoon. That's a bit of shame. Uh, but it's always good to double your experience, isn't it? You need two hands. I leave this microphone again. It's better if you see me here. 
a very quick pattern. So this is the moment where we put the headphones on now. Like this is my audio guide, track one, introduction. But we have no headphones. Still, we have another kind of object that represents the headphones. Next to you. One hand, tricky. Other hand, quicker. Stop. Press the sound into your ear, and very slowly close down. Very slowly, the last centimeters. Elbows up and press. Relax. I have to shout because you can't hear me. <laughs> and again, up the elbows and try to hear the low bass frequency, the subwoofer there. Your joints. One hand away. Write your name on your hand, or someone else's name. I've done this because this uh, first track introduction will um, use the fact that the headphone is not just a medium, but also a tool in itself as uh, the starting point. It will make you being aware of touching the headphone, having plastic in that case, on your head. And Everything what comes with it. Track two. If I'm, um, I would love to have a time after ten minutes. Yeah, because I'm so good and running out of time. Baby, hit me one more time. People will not only get, um, I need the, the video now, will not only get headphones, they will also get a percussion stick. And I show you a very short video that I've done in a, um, in a performance, for a performance in Athens. But this is a technique I've developed for Hasselt. But since then I'm trying it out everywhere where I'm going. Different sticks and everything. Uh, the whole idea is that you run around in a city and you hit whatever you find to try to create a relationship between you and the city, between you and the objects, between um, um, the stick and the objects, and you kind of three different subjects here. And uh, try to let the city vibrate for you and create a resonance. Here comes a little video.
The track to Hit and Run is a track... Wait, I cannot search and talk at the same time. Here we go. Um, the idea is you get a stick, you walk around the city, you get instructions to hit whatever you meet. Um, what I like so much about this technique is that uh, even when you put the stick aside, five minutes? I'm already 15 minutes in. That's spectacular. Um, the idea, what, what happens there is that you, um, what did I want to say here? Um, that even if you put the stick away again, you still hear the city resonating. Whatever you look at after a while starts resonating. Why do I like it so much? Because um, it changes your gaze on the city, it changes totally your way of walking through it because you have just uh, emphasized something you have maybe not thought so much about before. Um, for me, that is uh, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, capacity of art itself to just give you frameworks that make you yourself looking at things differently. Even though you have, might have forgotten about this Odegaard long time uh, after, like quickly after, still whatever you look at will have suddenly a sound. Uh, so it's a kind of a filter that I put on a city instead of like giving you a story, I give you a different color to the city. Um, hit and run, track two. Um, now I have to kind of uh, see what I, I can tell you still. Uh, I will then guide you through the, sh um, through the parking lot, the underground parking lot in, uh, that, uh, in Hasselt, uh, kind of as a dive into the underworld, where we will, um, I mean, parking, I love working in parking lots on a parking space because there's such a, a pre-organization already done. There are a lot of uh, lines on the ground and there's a whole kind of system already running. And the moment people step out of the car, there is no system anymore. There's some things still like hanging here and there, like there's the exit, but then you cross this kind of predetermined system. I have worked, um, I skip all this, uh, in, with scores on grounds myself. Uh, I show you two examples. Uh, this is in uh, Deist, in the Citadel from Deist, where I have like uh, made a, a ground score with different, yeah, it doesn't pop up. I don't know. Okay. That's pretty small, isn't it? Um, I, I like this. A ground score with different figures of walking next to each other and what happens when people turn suddenly to the left and to the right, inspired by um, organized walking of different fashion, like uh, choreographies in dance, but also choreographies in, of course, since it was in the Citadel, in uh, military and other kind of uh, militaristic disciplinations of the body. Um, some examples, I've done it in other places, I've done it in the uh, Martin Gropius Bau in Berlin, a much bigger version of it. Um, here you see the pattern that I have drawn to the ground with a lot of, like here's an explanation of all the small figures uh, of uh, what people are doing. I'm a bit hasty here now. I will show you one more thing, which is a bit more clear. Done this for the Queen's Museum in New York, where I have uh, made a, a chalk drawing here and not a tape or paint into the grass. And this is what you actually can't see because the photograph doesn't give it. I have drawn it onto the photograph. Um, so this is a very simple. Three people start walking here on different, like sports people in a stadium on different um, spots, but at the same time, they turn uh, at the same time and here, uh, yeah, turn on the set at the same time uh, to the left. And once they're here, they should be more or less, in case they walk uh, at the same speed, uh, parallel and so uh, behind each other, turning to the left again. Um, simple turn here, you see again, they must arrive parallel, maybe more or less at the same time, suddenly walking next to each other, here behind each other, here next to each other. Very complex changing position. And here an open question on how to organize yourself. Either you go back or you stop and <coughs> change, uh, either you stop or you change position and you walk back. These kind, I show you these examples because I think in all the tracks that I will do for this audio guide as well, and in many other works I have done, I always try to find a relationship between quite disciplined guidance and at that one time, and on the other hand, a very kind of open form that is like, of course, not controlled by the artist who is not there when you do an audio guide, who is not there when you walk my choreographies on the ground. But so you have to kind of find your way through this proposed compositions and maybe accept for a certain amount of time 
to be disciplined, to be organized, but then also interpreted yourself, especially when you walk with different people. I don't tell you, I can't even tell you how quick you walk. So these figures might work out or they might not work out. Um, it's just a kind of an, an open question and how far you can kind of emphasize the freedom of the audience, kind of the self-responsibility of the audience, uh, not by just saying like do what you want, by, but by giving you a kind of a structured, maybe composed uh, form and then uh, maybe a a emphasize the, the moment of freedom in this contradiction, in the dichotomy, uh, is that a word in English even? Dichotomy, dichotomy, what is that in English? The economy. <laughs> I can't pronounce that, but okay. In the uh, in the relationship between organized and not organizable, I would say. So somehow it's the way to go give back the responsibility to this interactive moment to the self performance of the audience. Even though I propose pretty organized things, am I done already? It's twenty minutes. I have so much to say still, so, but hmm? <coughs> amazing. So um, tr I skip track four. Um, which is good because then you are very curious about that and you will do that in autumn and come and do my audio guide. So um, <coughs> I give you a little uh, insight in, the, uh, in track five, which is at the skate park uh, close, I don't know how this park is called, but close to the swimming pool in Hasselt, <coughs> where um, I love this, I love skate parks for, I mean, not for so much for the subculture, uh, it's not really my thing, but for the yeah, exactly this relationship between a very organized space, a proposed choreography almost, but then kind of like uh, it triggers creativity of the people who use it. Uh, so it's somehow uh, maybe a scored place, but then it's still a very open, free improvisation also, like if you compare it to mu in musical terms. Very composed as a proposition and then very improvised in its activation by the, by the audience. Um, of course, I don't want anyone to take a skateboard with them, but I want to use this theatrical uh, moment because it's also a tribune a bit, no? where people look at each other. It's this pl place of um, uh, um, uh, yeah, showing off and perform performance in that sense, actually. Not only self-performance, but also like the performance where you perform for an audience. And I try to look for this uh, relationship where is the moment that you as a self-performer where I ask you to do maybe certain tasks, tasks in the skate park, uh, suddenly become uh, also somebody who's looked at. So you are, like the question is, if you are still the audience of my audio guide, or maybe you are actually the performer for another audience that kind of looks at what you're doing. Uh, the main moment where it gets a little bit um, spicy for some people, this is, uh, I think, the right place to do that. And I want to just show you a, a small video. Uh, suddenly I'm much louder. I, I wanted to show you an audio guide too something else I wanted to do so here comes a little video of a performance that I have done in Amsterdam this is a score that I've proposed to that this oh, it does work. a score that I've proposed to the audience uh, to an audience of the Oudekerk in Amsterdam where I um, I call these series of pieces I've done it in different buildings scores for the body the building and the soul in this case I call it body for the church the building the body and the audience um, Where's the soul gun? Oh, it's maybe in the church, but anyways. Um, I've done it for museums and for um, theater spaces, for public spaces. In Antwerp, there's one version for the Mechelen plane. Uh, here in the Audekerk, I give seven little scored uh, introductions, which are these uh, letters here, uh, and always a little bit of like graphic design to illustrate the whole thing. And um, I show you just a little video, then I don't have to explain it myself, which is, I hope, short enough to be still being played back. Uh, so the people get this paper, this A3 paper, into the hand, and the paper, uh, yeah, one thing maybe, the, the audience again is the performer and the audience themselves, but also the score in this, uh, in this version is also the instrument. So the score is the instrument as well as the audience is the performer. This performance takes place in the Oudekerk, the oldest church and building of Amsterdam. The audience receives a paper sheet at the entrance with seven pieces to be performed by themselves alone. The paper sheet thereby serves as both score and instrument. The traces of its usage grow with each intervention until it's finally ripped to pieces. Handpiece. 
Touch surfaces such as pillars, walls, graves, benches or doors with both hands. Always have one hand on the paper and one off the paper. Try at least seven different surfaces. Eyepiece. Roll the score sheet into a tube. Look through it with one eye. Leave the other eye open. Learn this image by heart. Finger slider makes buddy bowl. Slide with one finger back and forth between corners. The sheet will rotate around the point of your finger. Travel along and down the wall with this game. Foot piece. Walk around sliding the score sheet with one foot on the ground. Enjoy the sound it makes. Cuffing piece. Cuff. Enjoy the small fluttering echo from the ceiling. Leaning. Lightly fold the sheet of paper several times. Choose a pillar or a part of the wall and lean against it, touching it only with your forehead while holding the sheet in between the stone and your body. Stay like this for a while, even a bit longer than you would prefer. Repeat this posture at two other locations. Music and 64 pieces. Rip paper along the dotted lines in the order of numbers. Long dots as slow as possible. Short dots as fast as possible. So this last piece um <laughs> It is called music in 64 pieces because if you do it right, you have 64 pieces on the ground, not because it's a minimalistic music piece with a very contemporary music title, music in 64 pieces, but that's of course the joke of it. Uh, I think I'm done here with my time, no? more or less. I wanted to talk you through several tracks of this audio guide that you do, that you will do, you hear the imperative in that, in autumn. Um, where I will get you in different states of self-performance, self-performativity and introactivity. <coughs> Uh, but also a lot of humor and fun, I hope, um, letting you hit whatever you find with these sticks. Please be nice to people, uh, even though they sound great, maybe. But um, uh, So I will uh, trigger a, an image of the city that you might have not had before. And I will, um, yeah, I will take good care of you, let's say it like this. Voila, until you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, let's go to Vida. I can imagine you saw a lot of things. I feel weird in this performance. Yeah. Who feels weird? Everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I really liked your ideas. Um, yeah, it would be funny to, to have a competition to walk your, uh, your pathways. I think it would be not fair for some. Okay, so, yeah. Then let's you would. Yeah, now you will look like this in the end. Um, yeah, the two sticks in a bar fight. You want to take this outside. <laughs> you did, though. And your, uh, your crazy composition got us all tricked. Uh, left, right, left. Okay. Were you drawing while you were doing it? I, in the beginning, but then you, then you got me all screwed up, so... Yeah, sorry. Oh yeah, the inside of your mouth does feel huge, but we have a word for it in uh, Dutch, and it's the hug. Uh, so, no, it is hug and this the hug. Who says it? Sorry, bad joke, okay. <laughs> this feels weird. <laughs> I don't get it. Vida, thank you. Thank you so much.